Hi, I'm Drew from How to Cook Like Your Grandmother, and today I'm here with my friend Lori, who's going to teach me how to make guacamole. Hi, Lori. Hi, good morning. So, uh, Bobby, until about a year ago, mm -hmm. I didn't like guacamole, and I was here at your sister's house, and she just made a batch from your recipe, and mm -hmm. everybody's telling me, Drew, you have to try this. Yeah. <laughs> I pulled up a chair and finished the whole bowl, and I've been telling Kathy ever since then, mm -hmm. I need to get your recipe. So, today we're going to do it. Well, um, thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, I... Guacamole is one of my favorite comfort foods. Um, I love guac. I love the freshness of it. Um, it's very quick to prepare. My family loves it. Um, and today, I hope everyone in your, your audience loves it as well. Okay, so we just washed the, we're done with the avocados mm -hmm. and just rinsed the cutting board off. So next up, what do we have? Um, we have our tomato. Okay. A um, couple of different options in tomato. Um, some people use a plum tomato. Um, I found these on sale, so I think those, these will do just fine. You on can, sale tomatoes, I like that brand. Absolutely. Um, you can roast them for a little bit different flavor, so there's some variation in, in making black, but we're just doing natural raw black. Now this is going to be mostly avocado and just a little tomato compared, right? Mm, yeah, I have to see. I have to see um, how it looks. You know, I I don't really tell you to do two tomatoes and six avocados. Um, I think it, it all depends on how it looks for me. I don't like huge chunks of tomato. Okay. Uh, so I'll do some little baby dices. How pretty that looks already. Let's give it a stir and see if we need some more. Let's see, I'm use up this little one last dice. Like you said, not too much, but we do need some. Or at least I need some in this recipe. <laughs> Your recipe. Okay, and what do we need next? Um, next we're going to do an onion. And again, there's some variation on an onion. Um, some folks like to use a, a sweet onion, Spanish white is all kind of options. I prefer the red, I like the color, so that's what I use. That's what I've got some red onions at home, I'm going to be doing some uh, black bean and corn salsa, and I got the red onion just for the color. Absolutely, look how pretty that is. I used to always try to get every little bit of the onion, and I'd be real careful about getting right up close to the root. Mm -hmm. and then one day I realized that they were about you know, $3 for a five pound bag. And I can afford to just get another onion. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't like real thick chunks of onion. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, we live TV. Mm -hmm. In my kitchen, I have a fancy little chopper, like, can get lazy. We'll chop this real quick. We'll do it good old-fashioned way. So no slap and chop hay, but we still managed to get it down with small mm -hmm. dice. And again, we're just going to eyeball this and of course taste it at the end to see if we need a little bit more. You um, can always add more, but you can't take back. So I think this looks good. Get a nice stir. Probably at the end. Red onion, again, is a good choice because it's a mild flavor. Not too, too sharp on the bite. We're going to move on to the garlic. And again, this is, uh, not quite sure, probably, well, depending on your size of garlic and how big your cloves are, I would say, and also your taste. Some, some folks don't like a lot of strong garlic. Of course, well, here in this kitchen. Well, Mexican food. Yeah, absolutely. We love it. The more, the better. That's probably why I like your guac, because it probably has more garlic in it than other recipes I've tasted. Well, you'll tasted. smell for a good few days, but that's okay. That's why I always make sure Jen has some if I do. Smart man. I might just use this whole garlic ball. Oh, why not? I'll stink, be stinky tomorrow, no? Okay, and as we all know, just take a good shop on this noisy table. Okay. Um, and 
peel our paper off. Okay, so my, my pushing is better than my smashing, maybe. Okay. Now, do you normally cut the roots off or just? Um, if they're big. Okay. Okay, sure. It, that's a offensive too. Yeah, I, I probably spend more time on that than I really need to, but <laughs> I don't like even a little bit of the root. We're just going to chop, chop, chop. Is this another one you normally use the chopper for? I would. I would <laughs> so. Okay, I think this looks pretty good. Nice and tiny. Again, who wants to bite into a big chunk of garlic? Probably not. And eyeballing this again, sprinkling it in. Yummy, it looks like a lot, but once you mix that in, it'll be so good. Is this one of those recipes that's better the next day after the flavors had time to, to mix? You know, I'm such a, a, a snobby when it comes to this. I think it's just great now. <laughs> um, but probably, yes, um, when it's had time to soak in there, sure. But I just think it's so If you snobby. can leave fresh guac that long and not finish it all. Yeah, because it really never lasts that long in my in my house. It, uh, I've had people ask me that on the block. How long does this keep in the refrigerator? I wouldn't know. I've I never had enough dough. No. Okay. Um, we're going to do, um, I think, in my opinion, the most important ingredient in this, and that's cilantro. Love, love, love cilantro. I can already smell it now. Just yeah, you know, and please don't use parsley and think that there's a diff there is a difference. Um, you cannot use parsley in this. There's such a difference. I've used fresh parsley, and you don't smell it like this when you cut it. Oh, no. No, no, no. I mean, love our parsley, but uh, not in this. So I can understand people not liking cilantro because it is very strong. You either flavor. like it or, um, well I should say you either love it or really, really hate it. It's just one of those things that, like something like this you want to get rid of. Um, okay, I think this looks good. We're going to go with our first little bunch and chop this up. The best and easiest way to do it is just kind of tuck it, roll it. I think there's a fancy term for this, but... Chiffonade. Okay, there you go. And just try to... I watch a lot of TV. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I'm not doing this the way uh, a fancy guy would, but I've never cut a finger, so. And I just go ahead and... I could just throw that in my face. On it. <laughs> <laughs> and just go the opposite. And, you know, this bruise is pretty easy, but I just kind of go through. And that's a good point about cutting herbs, is you want a really sharp knife, because otherwise you're not cutting it, you're just mashing it. And I think this probably could have used a sharpening before our um, episode today, but um, I just sprinkle it in there. And again, another eyeball. Love cilantro, so I am heavy on the cilantro. Big fan. Give it a good stir. Okay. At this point, um, you know, you have some options. You can make this spicier, mild. Um, I have two little girls that love this, that don't appreciate the spice of a jalapeno or other pepper, so I, I leave mine mild. Um, I end with some seasonings, and my go-to seasonings are my salt and my pepper. I'm heavy on the salt. I know I have high blood pressure someday, but I really like it. And also heavy on the pepper as well. And you're going to taste it several times before it's right. A couple of other seasonings that I like. I like uh, cumin. Cumin is the one that uh, I learned when I was making chili. Mm -hmm. You can make chili without cumin, but it, it can be good. It can be a, a nice, thick, meaty chili, and it it just doesn't taste like chili. Though cumin, to me, like chili, yeah. is the thing that makes it chili. Absolutely, absolutely. It screams Mexico. I also probably a, a non-traditional thing that I add my um, avocado is my little secret Mrs. Dash. I like um, a couple of different varieties out. This is a Fiesta lime. Uh, it has a tanginess um, and no more salt in it. So you're not, you have no fear of over salting. That's one of the things I don't like about a lot of the prepared seasonings is that mm -hmm. most of them are half salt and I've already yeah, added salt. It's, it's, it's the other good. stuff I want. A little pinch of that. The Fiesta lime 
of Mrs. Stash. And then I also like the grilling seasoning of Mrs. Stash. It's a real big chunks of a uh, little bit of pepper. So let's see what's in the Mrs. Dash. You've got and it's pretty. chili peppers, cumin, paprika, cayenne pepper, black pepper, oregano, basil, bay, marjoram, thyme, savory, coriander, mustard, rosemary, garlic, onion, <laughs> lime juice, and lime peel. Yeah, that's what I would put in. It's a lot, a lot of ingredients, but it's really yummy. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit more lime juice, but um, let's see. Yeah, so you did the, uh, the lime actually while you still had a few avocados to cut. Why was that? Well, because when you open up an avocado, um, once it hits the air, the enzymes in the avocado, they oxidize and they will turn um, a yucky brownish black color on you. And it's not very appealing at all. And then so you, you get some them. of the lime in when you're still working on the avocado. Yeah, it's really important to do that. You really want to um, really do that so it stays a pretty green color, real fresh looking and not yucky brown. We better finish up on this soon because I'm about to grab some chips and start <laughs> eating it. Yeah, but you know what? I think we I think we need a little bit more tomato, Drew. Yeah, it does look a little bit sparse, doesn't it? Yeah, so I'm going to... See, and that, that's the thing. You, you just have to eyeball um, your ingredients, your your recipe, and, and by the way, it'll, it'll speak to you, and it'll say, no, oh, more tomato. I washed this earlier, so it's nice and clean. Well, I worked at a bar when I was in college, and I learned mm -hmm. something there that has been turned out to be true for food, too. What's that? A lot of people, when you're doing mixed drinks, mm -hmm. they go by color. Oh, do they? And they'll think it's wrong if it's the wrong color. They'll think it's right if it's the right color. It almost doesn't matter what you put into it sometimes. No. And with food, you you have an idea in your head what it's supposed to look like. Exactly. Which is why blind taste tests can be so different from when you tell people what it is. If you look at it and you know what it's supposed to look like, you make a decision before you even eat it. I agree with you. There must be something in our brains that tell us it doesn't look good. Don't need it. Which is why we need to get the, the lime on there before it turns brown. Because once your mind says it's not good, it doesn't matter what your tongue says. You turn into six-year-old. <laughs> okay, I think this will do it. A little bit more color in it. Not only does it, it taste yummy, it looks yummy. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna try a little bite. Let me see. Yummy. Need anything else? Care for a chip? Of course. You think it needs more lime, actually. Oh, Oops. dear. Party foul. <laughs> and here we go. Hmm. That's good. Please give me some more juice. There ah. you go. You must not have done that one See? before. See? When you pray... <laughs> Can you squeeze it real hard? Awesome. Peanut butter mess a little bit. What do you think? We need mm -hmm. some more? That was it. Is that it? Mm -hmm. Is that did it for you? Yep. Okay. You taste the cilantro. You taste the lime. Let me taste it. Taste the garlic. Got everything. So, here we've got the guacamole, and we're saying the, uh, when we started, they like the mm -hmm. chunkier version, I did. but this, the uh, the avocados were a little bit overripe. That's right. So, this mm -hmm. came out kind of traditional Very avocados. Mm -hmm. So, let's go ahead and uh, Sample? Get a shot. Oh, the best part. Mm. Oh, yeah. I wish you could taste this. This is good. Thanks. Okay. So, um... I'm going to steal this bowl, and you can go ahead and make more if you want it. Oh, my goodness. I need okay. another chip first. Okay. And that was Lori teaching me how to make guacamole. Right. Okay. Enjoy. That's cute. Can you edit that? <laughs> you don't. You look, I think you look well, Can you Photoshop some... You can push up still video, it's a little harder. Really? It, like it could be that I can't, but it can't be better. Is that better? <laughs> okay.